what's up guys welcome back to man cave collectibles coming at you today with another figure review today we got something really hot off the shelf we've got the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze movie figures for Toka and Razar these are some really hotly anticipated figures that most of us have been waiting on if we collect this line I just received mine in the man cave here yesterday and I can't wait to get this review out to you guys as well as just for my own personal reasons getting these guys out of package and seeing what NECA has really done with them as far as what we can see in the package amazing I love what we can see we can see both figures real well we can see a lot of the accessories inside this window here at the bottom you've got kind of that iconic scene from the original poster for the uh, Ninja Turtles 2 movie you got them kind of gathered around the canister of ooze there as we flip on to the top, we've got a little product shot here of Token Razar or Razar. Uh, I'm not sure which way you pronounce that. We've got a product shot of both of them there on the top. Spin it on around. Product image to the back. Got real nice images of the products here along with some of the actual turtle movie figures, which we'll take a look at as well. They do promote the facial features, the articulated facial features here at the bottom of the panel and then here you got them kind of with their weapons uh, it looks like a pipe piece of piece of wood there and then another product image here on the side let's go ahead and do what we've all came here today for let's get them out of the box and see what we got all right guys we got our token razor out of their packaging onto our view table and let me tell you NECA just took their movie line to a whole new level. I, I like the movie line prior to these. I just absolutely adore and love the movie line now with these two guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at accessories as always. So the first things we'll look at is what well, some things we've kind of already seen. We've got the log here to use as a weapon. It looks phenomenal. I mean, just look at the paint detail here on the kind of the bark side of this. It is, it is truly amazing. You could almost argue that this is a actual piece of wood. And it's, it's pretty weighty. Uh, you know, it doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. It's, you, can't, uh, you can slightly bend it. Uh, it is just a solid piece of plastic. But looks really, really good. It does have, uh, you know, some, I guess, kind of some holes here. I don't know that those are necessarily peg holes per se. We'll have to see. It may be set up to where... Uh, his claws can can go into that um, That's kind of what it looks like. So we'll take a look at that once we uh, get into the figure a little more and then we've got a pipe here And the pipe looks really good again. The paintwork on this thing is just phenomenal It's got a little bit of a kind of a gray and white wash to it to kind of give it that look and then kind of opened Open at the ends now. It's not hollow all the way through we can't see all the way through it but they did open it up here at the ends to kind of give it just uh, more of that look. Looks really, really nice. Now really cool here, we've got our pre-fight donuts. So uh, kind of to throw in with that, we've got our box there, Simply Donuts box. So these will uh, just fit right down in the box like that. Man, just, I mean, that is just, am that's amazing. To, to put this in our hands now in 2020, you know something that was just so iconic to a lot of us as kids uh, you know man just thank you NECA uh, is really all you can say now we've also got the donut in which uh, they kind of figured out uh, you know that the turtles were trying to scam them so the one they kind of busted open there you go it's got the little tablet in it there that the turtles needed them to ingest looks really good okay we've got the shield here that Razor 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 I'm not sure again I'm not sure how you pronounce that we're just gonna call him Razor today but it's got these uh, kind of these handles here that you can either fit around his wrist or somehow place you know in his hand so that he can Hold his shield it's just a lightweight plastic it's a hard plastic so this would be something you could probably break if you weren't careful with uh, it does have kind of a, a real thin feel to it 
So this is not something you'd want to uh, really play around with a whole lot, I wouldn't think. We got the TGRI mutagen canister here, looks good. It's got that TGRI written on the side there and on this side as well. And then just kind of a chrome silver and the, the nice green there. All right, guys, and then lastly, for the accessories, now we still got some hands to go, but for the accessories, we've got the fire extinguisher. Now this played probably one of the biggest roles in the movie, as this is kind of what initiated, uh, you know, the doctor uh, and Donatello, you know, they had come up with the little peel that would turn them back into their original, uh, you know, form, uh, snapping turtle and wolf or what, you know, whatever he was. But they needed carbon dioxide to uh, go ahead and initiate that process. So uh, they found the fire extinguisher, uh, mixed it in. Uh, you know, basically they got them down on the ground, held them down, shoved this in their mouth, and pumped them full of carbon dioxide. And that helped initiate the transformation process. So this was a very, very important uh, asset to the turtles in defeating Token Razor. So it's really cool that they put it in there. Kind of a must-have, I guess, in NECA. You know, always thinking of the details. Went ahead and got us the fire extinguisher. So it was really cool. Lots of good paint work on here, paint apps. This is kind of a real soft plastic, so it moves real well for you. It's not really, uh, it's not a bendy wire or anything like that, but it looks really, really nice. So next up, we've got their spare hand. So uh, you've got this kind of semi-open hand here. Now this looks like this would probably be good for uh, holding the pipe in his hand there. You can see it's kind of a perfectly round shaped hand. And then you've got one that's a little more open. So this one may be for holding something maybe like uh, the donut. If you wanted to have the donut in his hand, uh, this would be kind of one that would be good for that. But these look really, really good. They're painted extremely well. Got that detail there with the wrap kind of around the hands and the green. The the claws, the, the detail that the paint detail that they put on these claws are just phenomenal. You can take a look at that. And and they're pretty sharp. Um, Toka was uh, extremely sharp coming out of package uh, with all of his uh, pointy bits and all. And then we move on into... Uh, kind of almost, uh, I would say almost like a fist hand, but not quite. You can see they're slightly open there. So I don't know that there's really anything that we have that they would hold in these hands, but if you just kind of wanted a closed hand, this would be it. And again, you can just see that phenomenal detail that we have there on the paintwork for those. So uh, then you got pretty much completely open hands here, uh, actually on the figure straight out of packaging. With Razor, we've got uh, semi-open hand here. This would be, uh, again, a good hand for the donut, probably, as, as it is the most open hand of the accessory hands. So the ones that he has on him there, you can see that one's pretty open as well, and that one also. Uh, but this, this could also probably be used for his accessory here. So we'll see if, see how that works. Yeah, it doesn't look like this really is going to fit in that hand. So it may be maybe the more open hand that he has on his body right now. But just look at the detail on those claws and the paintwork. Got the fur there coming off. Looks really, really nice. Kind of the same as Toka there. He's got two hands that are close to fist hands, but not quite. You can see they do have a little opening there. But they're about as close to fist hands as we're going to get for these guys. And then you've got this hand here, which is fairly closed. You may could fit something in there, um, but it, it would be tough. That would be a good one, like if you wanted to have kind of like him crushing the donut and finding, uh, you know, the tablet inside. You could use that one for that one probably. And then what he's got on him there is a semi-open hands and they both look really, really good. Let's go ahead and take some close-up looks here at our figure. We'll start with our Toka figure. I want to take a look at this guy's face and just the work that NECA did here with this guy. Those eyes, those just crazy iconic eyes there. <laughs> just wild looking. Got that beak like a snapping turtle. 
so much detail in the paint. I mean, the paint on these guys is just phenomenal, just flawless. I, it's hard to really explain, um, you know, just how well these are done uh, in count, you know, from behind a camera. You just almost have to have them in hand to, to truly respect what Neck has done. These are these make it tough. These are uh, they're kind of a soft plastic, so you can you can move them around, but they're extremely sharp uh, to the to the touch. So you know, getting them out of package was uh, created a little you know created some some awkward opp opportunity for uh, getting poked. You can see the nice paintwork they've got here on the tassels that are coming off, and this is kind of just a soft plastic, so you don't have to worry about it breaking off or anything. The shell here is done really, really nice. Uh, again, it is kind of a soft plastic as well, and it hides some a uh, little bit of articulation that's in there. We'll look at articulation in a minute, but it looks really, really nice. And then moving on down, just just unbelievable work here by NECA. And then you just look at these these nails and how well they're done. Now this guy here is extremely top heavy. You can imagine, you can look at that big old shell on the back and it's just a solid chunk of plastic. So uh, NECA did a good job really of making the feet big enough to where I think he's gonna stand without a whole lot of issue. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our Razor figure. Take a close look at him as well. <laughs> Amazing. See inside the mouth on here, now they do have articulated jaws, we'll talk about that shortly, but you can see there just uh, got a kind of a glossy finish inside, those nice big crazy blue eyes there. Uh, this right here is kind of free floating, uh, it, has, it has chains on it, you can see the chains kind of wrap around and hold it in place. Those are very, very small chains, so you probably would not want to mess with them too much. Uh, I could see those breaking extremely easy if you were to try to go to shifting this around a whole lot. So you kind of just want to let it fall into place, kind of be where it is. Got some nice shoulder armor up here. The the hair and the fur is just sculpted really, really well. Got a lot of nice shading in it to kind of give it that realistic look. You can see kind of some black shading through it. He's got his armor here. One arm on this side. Again, just those nicely painted tassels. I think, I want to say too, all this is plastic. None of this is metal or die cast. So even the chains there appear to be, appear to be plastic. I, it's hard to tell. If you know for sure, you can drop it in the comments below. But everything else for sure is plastic. And then looking down here at those toes. Just such a good job here. This This is... Definitely showing uh, kind of where NECA, uh, you know, has really just found their niche uh, in doing these turtle figures. It's really phenomenal. All right, so we're going to run through uh, articulation on both these guys kind of at the same time uh, as it's going to be very, very similar for both of them. Uh, so as far as our Razor figure here, we don't have a whole lot of down. Got a little bit of up there you can see. So we can get up to about right there. And again, in that head, we do have that mouth articulation, which you can see there, moving up and down. We can get them side to side, get the full 360 if you want it. But obviously he spent a lot of his time looking down uh, on the turtles. And then over here on our Toka figure, I can't get down any, but I can get up plenty. You can see that, you almost get him looking straight up. Same thing with him. He does have, it's just kind of in there good, but he does have that articulated jaw so you can get it wide open and fully closed. Looks really, really nice. Now it looks like, I'm not sure if that's really meant to be that way, but the, the snapping uh, gimmick on the end there, I don't know if that's meant to be articulated or if that's just getting ready to come off, but um, it does move as well kind of hinges there so it doesn't really I don't know why it would hinge it doesn't really play any type of a role uh, in the articulated jaw so I don't I don't let, them, let me know when you guys get yours if that's uh, something you see on yours as well is that 
is that articulation or uh, is, is it not? And then here, you also even have articulation on his eyebrows. So you can really bring him in close. You can really change the expression and go from, you know, kind of a funny to, a, to an extremely angry uh, option. I don't see uh, that, that same type of articulation as far as the eyebrows with our Razor figure. Uh, it looks like his is kind of more set in place and it's just going to be based on the, um, you know, mouth articulation, you know, how you get the kind of that expression. So moving on in the figures here, so we can get the arms up to about right there comfortably uh, over here about the same. You can see that they both have, he has a, you know, a lot of shoulder armor here. He has kind of spikes coming out. So those spikes are going to hinder how far up that arm can get. We have lower bicep articulation there and the same on our Toka figure. Okay, they both have the double jointed elbows. So again, now this is NECA. So we're gonna be careful with our articulating these guys right out of package without any heat, but we do have articulation here at the bottom of the bicep as well as right here at the top of the forearm. That's how they decided to do this one. They do it the same on both of them. You have the articulation at both points, bottom bicep, top of the forearm. Okay, so that looks good. It works real well on these figures that have long, big arms. Uh, I think that's a, a good option that NECA is doing. As far as the uh, wrist here, you've got back and forth. You've got the full spin. It's going to be the same thing here on our Razor figure. And again, we got to be careful with this guy. He is a uh, he is very top heavy, so we gotta be careful with that. But over here, we've got forward and back, and then a full spin on him, so it looks good. Okay, I, so we, we did, I've already discussed it earlier, but there is a slight amount of articulation here inside or behind that kind of shell plate, but it's not a whole lot. You can see that's, that's it. A little bit of side to side, that's all you're gonna get there for Toka and then over here there is some that's he's gonna get a spin there a little bit of crunch back and forth but not much and again you're gonna to have to be careful because I still I'm just highly concerned about these chains that we have here and how well they're gonna hold up over time with a lot of articulation a lot of posing I think that's gonna probably cause some issues um, we have some spin but the only spin is that same articulation kind of that we just kind of worked with getting the legs out we can get them out to about right there we got double jointed knees which we can get to there it's not they're just such bulky figures you're, you're kind of limited as far as how that's can you know going to work and then here you've got articulation back and forth forward and back on the feet really tight down there which is you know good overall because these are such big and heavy figures you don't want loose articulation I, I would prefer to have the articulation be pretty stiff uh, and then once you kind of get them in their pose they're gonna stay you're not gonna have to worry about them so that's good with these legs out to there a little bit of a thigh swivel up top double jointed knees but the bulk again gonna keep it maybe a hair above 90 degrees and then the same articulation here in the feet that we saw with our toka figure forward and back okay and uh, you know again with these guys I don't know how much dynamic posing we really need versus just these guys just looking pretty on a shelf uh, you know that's really my what I'm most excited about Let's go ahead and bring in some of the other movie figures and take a look at size comparison. All right, guys, so here we got some size comparison with some of the other movie figures. So we've got our Michelangelo movie figure as well as our recent release Super Shredder figure. And uh, man, these guys are huge. They are so big and bulky. I mean, you can just see the mass difference here between our Toka figure and our Michelangelo figure. but. If you ever was really wondering how big Super Shredder is, I mean, look at this guy. You know, he's, he's an inch, an inch and a half taller even than our Razor figure. So 
you know, NECA just killing it with this line as far as the scale here, I think is just perfect and phenomenal. If you go back and watch the movie, I think they just nailed everything about these figures from scale to detail to accessories. I have no complaints. And, you know, if you watch a lot of my reviews, I try to give a pretty honest review on stuff. I think these two figures are going to be probably in my top 10 of the year. It's just hard to beat a figure uh, that has this type of detail in the price range that it's in uh, and it not make it into a top 10 uh, for that year. So just really, really phenomenal. If you haven't got these uh, figures yet, I can't wait till you get your hands on them. I think you're going to love them. Uh, if you have not, if you didn't get in on the pre-order, I imagine these are going to probably fetch a pretty good price on the secondary market. Uh, so you'll have to keep your eyes open for that if it's something you've kind of gotten in late to this line. Uh, or you never know, NECA may find some kind of way down the road to, uh, to re-release them. They've really been trying hard, I think, to try to make sure that everybody has opportunities to get most of their figures now and doing re-releases and NECA Direct type stuff. So you never know, uh, maybe something will open up in the future to allow a second opportunity with these. Hit that like button, guys. It helps, us, helps out the channel a ton. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Love to have you as part of the Man Cave Collectibles team. Drop a comment down below. What do you think of these figures? Do, are you, do you have them? Are they on, on their own the way? I've got a friend who has still not gotten his shipping notice for his yet, uh, and he ordered them about the same time I did. So I'm not sure how NECA is kind of determining the shipping order on these, but uh, obviously we, we got them pretty quickly. I'm very, very happy with that. But yeah, drop those comments down below. Love to hear from you guys. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until next time.